Chamba Shiva Maheshwaraya Chamba बदरा उठा प्रेम का ये जी बदरा उठा प्रेम का रे हम पर बरसा है हर शीले हो गई आत्मा और हरी भरी बन राय Shukadham 
मरण करुण मिलन मधुर स्मरण करुण काल वैश्यादिह सकल करुण समय दिपते अखिल करुण नमस्कार नमस्कार टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेर वे यू आर वेल आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर एट होम well all of you know the news around every nation is trying to get back into its economic activity people are desperately trying to get back some trying to go back home from wherever they were stuck others who've been stuck at home wanting to desperately get out you see one set of people who are away from homes are desperately wanting to go back home that many who got home in time and been locked up there for uh, nearly 8 weeks they are desperate to get out so this 2020 is going to be in many ways a unique year in our memories of life <laughs> there's a little poem for you for 2020 <coughs> it's titled as circa 2020 Do we have it up there? Oh. Doors closed, windows open, wistful, fearful, but hopeful eyes scanning for the invisible, elusive virus or its carriers, unseen and shrouded, shrouded in its minuteness. The one who has brought the world to its knees dances on. when the judicious ones are being judged as cowards and the very bold are dead quack solutions are a plenty not knowing the nature of this minuscule visitor humanity in quandary humbling brings out the best and the worst from different sorts a challenge of our times so uh, <laughs> I also thought I must uh, picturize this in some way so there's a little painting for that. <laughs> only one, only one, ma. Okay. Only one. No, no. I meant to say only that one. <laughs> no, no, both of you can do it. <laughs> when you do not know the nature of the enemy that you face all you can do is gape and that's all we're doing really we think we're doing many things actually all we're doing is just gaping not seeing anything <laughs> just gaping at it uh as all of you know and i've said this before 
we have not done anything about it because we don't know much about it. From what we… it is not fair to compare this to Spanish flu or the bubonic plagues, the black death of the past, because it's not that uh, virulent. It's mild, just teasing us. It'll kill us also, but not like those things which came in the past, which would just wipe out entire populations of a town or a village. So different kind, this will hurt us in a different way. So being judicious, being cautious, being precautious in our activity, we can come on top of it. But till now, whenever these kind of viruses happened in the past, we never found a solution. It just happened over a period of time. Well, either the virus mutated into a milder strain of its own, or we developed an immunity over a period of time and we came out on top of it. But we never really found an actual solution that all these things that are being touted as uh, vaccine is going to come in two months time, in three months time, such things have not happened. Not that it should not happen this time, but already as we know there are over ten strains of it. How are we going to do vaccines? How are we going to, even if we make a ac vaccine, how are we going to administer it to seven billion people, ten vaccines? There's going to be a lot of work by itself. So, the only way is to enhance our immune system, the only way is to behave socially in a responsible manner. This is the way forward and it's a new world, at least for the next one or two years, it is going to be a different world than what we have lived in. Uh, right now, <clears throat> Many things are being done, one aspect is uh, to just to bring to your notice, especially those of you who are in United States. The Harvard University in collaboration with the Beth... Uh, what? Beth Israel Hospital uh, Medical Center in United States, together they're conducting a research on how the yoga practitioners, people who have been doing some yogic practices, how do they respond to a virus like this? What is their resilience? Are they surviving better? I am hundred percent sure they're surviving better, but we need, uh, what to say, medical evidence for this, but I am hundred percent sure because uh, I have not heard of a single case of any of our meditators dying, some of them have lost their... <laughs> some of them have lost their parents, aged relatives, but not meditators, related. So, uh, yoga doesn't come through blood. You got to do it. You <laughs> That's the only problem with the damn thing. It works miraculously, but you have to do it. You can't ask your healthcare people to do it for you, it's not that kind. So, they're taking a sample of five thousand Isha yoga practitioners, those who are doing in engineering practices and other practices. So those of you in United States who want to enroll for this, please do that. And they will also study ten thousand non-yoga practitioners and in the next uh, probably three to four months, they will arrive at some sort of a, uh, you know, results for the study. What is the difference? I'm hundred percent sure there will be a difference, but only if you're practicing <laughs> So, please, those of you, this is only available to those who are residing in United States. So, please, those of you who are in U.S., enroll for this because this is going to be important for the... for the world, for the humanity, it's going to be important because they are predicting in another eight to fourteen years' time, there could be more pandemics for variety of reasons, some predictions are there. 
These are scientific calculations by looking at certain things, certain trends that are happening in the world. They say in another eight to fourteen years, there will be another pandemic. And that may be... we don't know what kind it will be, it could be much more virulent, it could take out a whole lot of population, but before then, we must see that whole population is doing yoga. Today morning I was just uh, walking outside and it's not new to me but this moment, that particular moment was such that uh, I wrote one small poem, can I torture you with this? Well, It's called, Oh Soil. The fragrance of the soil somehow is more tenderness to me than the fancy fragrance of the flower. The fragrance of the soil somehow is more tenderness to me than the fancy fragrance of the flower. The strength and sensitivity of life held in the soil lets off waves of passion of a different sort, passion not of a person but of my species that has gone insensitive. The strength and sensitive sensitivity of the life held in the soil lets off waves of passion of a different sort, passion not of a person but of my species that has gone insensitive to all that nourishes it and absorbs it at the end. As I walk barefoot, I break down with passion so profound that it defies all descriptions. As I walk barefoot, I break down with passion so profound that it defines, defies all descriptions. O oh, soil, my life! Uh, most people develop relationship with the soil only after they die. But it's very important to develop relationship with the soil when you're alive. I would say especially now, with this virus around, believe me, those of you who are in some way in contact with the soil, here we call this uh, Prutvi Prema Seva, that means getting involved with the soil in a very loving manner. Well, your ability to live, your ability to resist these kind of invasions upon your life will be greatly, greatly enhanced. It's not just enough if you live, it's important that you live strong. Living strong does not mean you grow big muscles and dominate somebody. Living strong means here, life happens big. For this, you need a, a body which treats the entire planet as its extension, which it is every day. You're taking something from it and putting back something to it. Do you shit every day or no? <laughs> I'm just checking, huh? <laughs> because consti people will... constipated people, not just in the body, I'm talking about those who are constipated here. There are too many constipated here. They will start, okay, where am I putting back, what am I taking? No, no, you eat and you shit, that means you're putting back. You breathe, so you're taking in and putting back. So, this planet is an extension. Or you can make it your ICU. Yes, it is. If you cannot breathe, then they will put you oxygen. That also has been taken from the atmosphere, not from somewhere else. It's not come from any, anywhere else. Whether you take medicine, it's come from the planet. You take food, it comes from the planet. You breathe, it's come from the planet. They put you on oxygen, it comes from the planet. So, this planet is an extension of yourself. Or why I'm giving you an opportunity to be bombastic in your life. But the reality is, 
you're just a pop-up in this planet. You pop up and you pop down. Yes, as far as Mother Earth is concerned, she is looking at you compassionately for your foolishness, because in her mind you just recycle. She's just recycling herself. But you're taking yourself so seriously <laughs> so seriously, oh! Can't believe what human beings think of themselves. So, uh, it's very important that you bring this, all of you who are here at the Isha Yoga Center, we will set up some processes for you so that every one of you, at least once in three days, your hands and feet are in the soil. Very important. <laughs> and wherever, wherever else you are, if you have a small patch of a garden, or uh, you can volunteer that you will work in somebody else's garden. <laughs> Believe me, yes, they will get free labor, but don't think they are getting more, you are getting much more because you being connected with the soil will make a phenomenal difference for your… for the way your physical body functions. Everybody must make use of this somewhere, at least go clean the streets. Do something, huh? put your hands into the soil, very important. Otherwise, those of you who are too well-to-do but don't want to be seen doing any work be because it may create a wrong image for your affluence, you can have a mud bath. <laughs> yes, that is also one way. <laughs> Shall I torture you with some more paintings? <laughs> See, I've been working. Have you… have any of… one of you seen a red peacock? You've not? <laughs> when in… in my childhood, when I visited the Mysore Zoo, there used to be a red-colored peacock there, a very rare, but once in a way they happen, some kind of mutation or whatever. There are white peacocks, you've seen them. There are white ones and there are red ones. So this childhood memory was strong in my mind and uh, I thought I should make some kind of a bird. Initially I thought I'll do an eagle, but then he looked too close up, he looked too like that. Then the peacock was walking by, I thought I'll do peacock, but its colors were too complex for me. I think it's too complex for anybody. If you pay enough attention to the peacock, every moment with every movement and light shades, its color is changing, I don't think anybody can capture it. Then this red peacock from my childhood came back, so here it is, it's gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is all red earth and all natural material except uh, a little bit of the gold that you see is acrylic, everything else is natural colors and basically earth. Is that it? Okay. This doesn't mean anything, it's just painting, okay <laughs> You done? Okay <laughs> So, here we are, uh, coming towards the end of uh, how many days? Sixty-four days, huh? 
for the number of days we've been under lockdown in India. Uh, I think little over sixty days, probably the total uh, lockdown is going to be sixty-four days, we are coming close to that. Thirty-first is supposed to be the closure. But uh, from tomorrow, there are going to be some domestic flights. But if you walk into this uh, airplane, all the hostesses and others look will make you feel like you're entering an ICU. <laughs> They're all dressed like that. And you yourself, uh, of course you have a mask and a shield and all kinds of things, okay? So I'm thinking of taking a boat to America. At least be at sea, nobody will infect you at sea for thirty days or something <laughs> Because airlines are going to be problem, only those who are desperately wanting to go somewhere has to use it, otherwise it's best to avoid it right now. Because the recirculated air, uh, there is no guarantee that if one person has any kind of virus, all the two hundred plus people will get it for sure, almost. So, it's a changed world, it's um, you know like the way we do air travel, post 9-11 uh, changed significantly. You have to move carefully, if you suddenly move, they'll point guns at you. Now it's even worse, <laughs> this is more than that. Now air travel is going to become a real issue and quite torturous, at least for a certain period of time, we don't know how long. Nobody knows how long because nobody knows what is the game plan of the virus yet. Nobody knows really. All guesswork happening, there is no clear scientific data to say, this is it, this is what the virus will do, this is what we can do to it, there is no such thing. We are only talking about what human beings can do so that virus doesn't thrive too much in our society. So, air travel is going to be opened up in India, but we must see the consequences of that. Tamil Nadu has kind of, I think, not given permission for air travel to start in the state because each state is allowed to make their own decisions. I think Tamil Nadu is not opting for it because Chennai is under sage. Uh, I think one day curfew or something is being imposed today or tomorrow, something like this. Sunday, I think it was today. Uh, this is because it's kind of big cities have gone crazy, Chennai, Mumbai, uh, Ahmedabad, Delhi, these are raging. Fortunately, the less rest of the country where the poorer population live, nothing much has happened. Most of the country, almost sixty, sixty-five percent of the country, totally free, COVID-free. And uh, Kowai is also COVID-free, but a city can any day get it as travelers coming from outside will bring it. But rural India has held on very well, though millions of, uh, you know, migrant workers, uh, daily wagers who are living in the cities, have gone back in so… by so many means. In spite of that, there is no outbreak, probably because of their land connection, their… their relationship with the soil is so strong, their immunity is so strong. Uh, if you… if you maintain a connection with the planet, virus comes, put it in the earth. <laughs> no, that's not the way it works, don't take that literally, but definitely, Definitely that connection is definitely making a difference, what kind of robustness of the body there is. Definitely is determined by connection with the earth. I… you know the old story that I've told you before, it so happened about eight to ten doctors from United States uh, came to yoga center here, way back I think nearly twenty-two, twenty-three years ago. I had spoken to them about the yogic hospital here. So they came here, they stayed for three days and uh, in the morning they called me, uh, you know, our office called me and said, Sadhguru, they are very angry, they are agitated, they want to go, all the doctors. I said, what happened? They are uh, agitated about the yogic hospital. 
I said, okay, let me see them. Then I saw them and uh, what is the problem? They said, where is the yogic hospital? You said there is a yogic hospital, where is it? I don't see anything. So their idea of a hospital is beds, nurses, everybody serving you. When you serve somebody so well, they will choose to be sick. <laughs> oh, I said, oh, that is your idea of a hospital. That's not how a yogic hospital runs. One thing is, all the sick people are up at five o'clock in the morning, 5.30 they're doing Guru Puja, then sadhana. After that, I'm putting to... putting them to work in the garden compulsorily. They have to work in the garden, then they have to work in the kitchen. And then they will rest for some time, maybe a little more than others, and then again get to work by two o'clock in the afternoon, and this is it. I can show you where they are. Then I went about introducing all the sick people, what problems they've come from, come with and how they're better, some of them are better, some of them just come, some of them are completely over it. I said, this is my hospital, this is not a hotel, this is a hospital. That means you come to get well, not to enjoy the hospitality of the staff. <laughs> so... <laughs> So it's very important and right now people are getting out to work, it's a good thing. At the same time it must be done judiciously, just uh, in reaction to the lockdown, if you go out, we could... we could produce disastrous results. When we go out, we must understand, out of our necessity we are out, not in reaction to the lockdown. As it is happening in some countries, they're all throwing big parties and doing this and religious meetings. Yesterday in Germany, forty people who attended a, a church mass are, are testing positive, forty out of some seventy-five. So what is the point? Because in reaction, either religious reaction or the, uh, you know, hmm, those who want to go to paradise, one reaction, those who want to have pleasure right here, another reaction. It's very important this is conducted judiciously, that we are getting out because it is the requirement of our life that we should get out and do what we have to do. Not in reaction because I was held up for so long, now I will go and splurge. This can be very, very damaging to the population. Well, you yourself may not be affected, but you could bring havoc, particularly to the vulnerable population in the society. So it's very, very, very important that everybody, especially young people, behave responsibly because you will be putting everybody else to risk. And that risk is not imaginary, it is not fiction, all right? It is... general estimate in the world is over four hundred thousand people are dead, just in United States it has reached almost hundred thousand. In next two, three days it'll cross hundred thousand. So hundred thousand people dead in a single country, if that is not reality, uh, I don't know, this is not fiction. Virus and the deaths and the struggles they're going through is not fiction. Anyway, most of the other people who are anyway dying, who die, everyday people die one way or the other. Now, everybody is getting into smart counting, every country, because they don't want to show very big numbers. Suppose one thing is, in most countries now, they are not testing the dead bodies anymore. It's too cumbersome. So that means if somebody falls dead in their home, it is not checked, so it is not accounted as virus death. They died, that's it. So if you go by this, probably the numbers that are being published are way, way below the reality. Well, nations have to do this to keep their people out of panic, to keep people inspired, to get out and do their... whatever the jobs that everybody has to do. Political leadership has to do this because if panic spreads all over, then ma managing that will become a major issue and a problem. So we will give them that margin because after all you have to manage a large mass of people, it's not easy.
But as individual human beings, it's very important that you're conscious of this. This uh, hypoxia thing that's happening that your oxygen levels are depleting, you don't know anything, you, you have no temperature, you have no indication, you did not cough, you did not sneeze, but you may just fall dead in your bed, okay? This is happening to lots of people and that's not being counted, but this is happening. This is one manifestation of the virus. Some people go into coughing, sneezing and of temperature, that's fine. The only thing that we have is we're pointing the temperature guns at people and that's the only thing that's allowing people to pass through various gates, whether it's airlines or trains or whatever, that if you read normal temperature, you're going through. But you could be actually dying with normal temperature without showing any temperature changes. So this is a unique problem. This needs enormous attention for every... from every human being to see that this does not become a major calamity. So, uh, I know I've said enough about this, but because seeing the behavior of human beings around the world, I think at least those of you who are meditators, those of you who claim you are little more aware than others, you must show the difference in how you live and you must make sure you don't get infected. In case you do, you must ensure absolutely it doesn't jump from you to another person. That much care, that much responsibility, everybody must show. Please, the questions. This question is from Kabir. Namaskaram Sadhguru. Is there any connection between the thoughts or emotions and our energy system? How does sweetness of emotion like love, devotion impact the life energies in the system? How does... Sorry? How does emotion like love, devotion impact the life energies in a system? Oh. So there are two approaches to this. <clears throat> If you are... if you are planning to participate, let's say you want to race, let's say a, a car race or a motorcycle race, you have a machine and yourself, you want to race. Now what you do is... first thing is you prepare the machine, prepare the machine, prepare the machine so that on the grid you are at least one of the best machines parked there. Because otherwise there's no point, it doesn't matter how good a driver you are, you are not going anywhere. So preparing the machine becomes very important. Then of course driving. Another way is you're just going to your office. Your machine, that kind of machine but you drive carefully and get to the office. Your purpose is fulfilled. You don't need that kind of a machine. You don't need that kind of a machine which will perform at that level. You just have to drive carefully, don't hit anybody, get to the office and come back home. You know one wheel is little like this, so you drive carefully, not hurting that wheel. Yes, most... lot of people are doing such things. So it depends on the purpose for which you're using this. So here, if you want to look at this as yourself and the machine, you want to keep this at a certain level of performance on all levels of life, then first thing is, to prepare your energy system so that it can take any kind of beating. It's most important that you prepare your energies in such a way, whatever havoc happens, it is fine, it doesn't get jangled. I used to do this <laughs> test for some people, we have given up such things these days. Uh, surprises in the sense, uh, Way back we did these things. You're walking, somebody comes and, you know, makes a loud noise next to you or creates some situation where something passes very close to you 
or uh, you know in yoga there's a classic example of throwing a rope and saying snake. So when this happens, how much your energies will jangle will tell you how stable your energy system is. When you're surprised, when you're not prepared for something, how does your system respond to it? Or is it a violent reaction or does it respond in a certain way? This is a beautiful story. Can I tell you a story? Yes. Sunday evening, don't fall asleep, okay? <laughs> there was a... <clears throat> a spiritual movement which was in central India at one time, a very intense movement, a guru with a few hundred monks and uh, people started going there to the center. They lived in the forest, but everybody went there. Those days, spiritual movements did not have to go fundraising because the kings always supported. When they saw somebody's doing something spiritually oriented, they were funded and never asked how they run their business because it was understood, it was done with utmost integrity. So, some of the ministers who are in the court were little upset with this particular movement where the guru had developed his monks in such a way that they are very proud, strong people, they do not bow down to the ministers and the courtiers, they do their own thing. When you do your own thing, lots of trouble, you should ask me <laughs> So, these people thought, all uh, you know, these guys taking money from us, but they don't listen to us, they do their own thing. <laughs> At different points in the growth of Isha, people have offered help conditionally and we've always refused it, for which we made lots of enemies, simply because we did not take their help. We refused because it was conditional. See, so many people, wonderful people have donated so much money to make this happen. We've not written anybody's name anywhere. I said, I will not write your name, nor will I write my name on anything. In this place, which is considered sacred, no. Tomorrow somewhere if you build a hospital or something, maybe we'll write your name. But in a spiritual place, we are not going to write your name. But in spite of that, wonderful people donated. All others were upset that if we donate, can we... <laughs> See, I'm drawing every creature out here <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Whatever the bird does, you must pardon him, okay? That's what he knows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so the ministers tried to poke the king, these guys take money from us, they're not listening to us, like this, they're so arrogant. So the king asked, have they done anything wrong? Uh, they tried to find this and that, they didn't find anything wrong. But they said, that's not the point. They don't look like spiritual people, they look strong, they look well-fed and they're proud of themselves. This is not spirituality, spirituality means they must clink around all the time. <laughs> Slinking around like that, that is our understanding of spirituality, these guys looking like soldiers. So, the king said, okay, let me talk to the guru and he called the guru. So, uh, king told him the problem that this is the problem I have, ministers are telling me we should stop all funding to you because you guys don't look like yogis. You're walking like that, up, upright, 
you must walk like this in front of people who have given you money. So the king asked, see I don't understand any of these things but I am asking you sincerely, is there some spiritual work happening there or not? The guru said, I don't want to say anything because such a question has come up in your mind, I don't want to say anything but you experiment. Let us check them out, whether spirituality is happening or not, let's do one thing, you come with me. So, king put on a disguise so that he is not recognized. The king and the guru, it will speak summertime, so generally it was the habit for people to sleep outside their homes in their gardens. So they went to the minister's house. And uh, the guru took a pail of water and threw it. He was fast asleep on his bed and threw it on his face. The guy got up screaming and shouting and, you know, abusing mothers, sisters, everybody of whoever dropped this water on him. And uh, from there they left quietly. And the other person who was a, a chief counselor, they went to his house, he was also sleeping outside and he was sleeping with his wife next to him. And they went and threw water on him. He got up and started beating her. <laughs> In his mind, the, the most nasty things can only be done by the wife. <laughs> he started beating her and abusing her. Then the guru said, you come. And he took him to his ashram, where there also all these monks were sleeping outside. So they went and put some water on one guy. He got up, Sira! <laughs> they put water on another guy, Shambhu! <laughs> so the guru said, this is the difference. Now, none of these people are conscious, they're fast asleep. When you put water, how they respond cannot be a cultivated response, can't be a pretentious response. It just happens. So, this is the simple way. So, those checks we are not doing on you these days <laughs> because we have, a, we have a thermometer with which we are checking you anyway. Yes, <laughs> we don't do such crude checks anymore, we just... You know, there was a thermometer means earlier thermometers used to be rectal thermometer. You had to undress to check your temperature. Then the thermometer became, you had to open your mouth and put it inside. Then they started doing armpit. Now, <laughs> so technology improving, like that only, we have set up other kinds of checks for you, which uh, we shouldn't tell you because you may pretend. <laughs> if, if you have temperature and you want to fly, if you had a way of controlling your temperature or put some cold water upon yourself, eat an ice cream. We did that when we were going to school, I'm telling you these technologies. We went and uh, they want to, I said, I'm feeling feverish, feverish, today I don't want to go because there's a cricket match in the afternoon somewhere. In the local area, if I go to school, I won't be able to attend. So, I'm feeling temperature feverish. I come here, thermometer because my father is a doctor. So go into the bathroom, take hot water, gurgle that and come <laughs> So, <laughs> there are ways to get temperature, there are ways to put down temperature, okay? Don't do this now, you're endangering others' lives <laughs> So, if you are building yourself up in such a way that you want to be in such a state, life and death, you can handle effortlessly. If that is your intent, then the only way to work is to stabilize the energy, to enhance the energy system and being joyful, being loving, uh, it is not even an intent, it will naturally happen because... See, right now your machine is really good, 
speed is not even an intent, even without you knowing, it'll happen. This happened <laughs> you know, uh, we are... We're planning to go once again in the month of October to Agu Bay. King Cobra eggs will hatch, this time we are thinking of going and seeing. So we were in that region, a few motorcycles and uh, about maybe twelve, fifteen motorcycles and about three, four cars and one particular van, which was not of an Indian make, which came from outside, American vehicle, which was carrying some spares and tools and everything. We were on some long rides. I'm talking when I was, I don't know, twenty-one, twenty-two, when every day I'm trying to die and it didn't happen. That's the kind of riding we're doing. <laughs> So, this particular van is being driven by some local driver. So, they instructed him, you stick to... because it's a... it's a maintenance van, it's... it has tools and spares and everything, we want him to be around us. Those days our motorcycles, max it will hit is 140, 145, that's it. But these are mountain roads, that is a lot of speed and... Uh, we don't go any faster because our machines are that kind. <laughs> it's not like today. So we... Uh, they instruct him, just stay... maximum you do is hundred kilometers per hour, hundred. When you say in Kannada, you say, hey, normal Ogbarth kano? Nooru, ashte. Nooru. And we try to catch up with this guy, this guy is gone, this van. Then ultimately in the mountain roads, we catch up with him and say, you idiot, we told you hundred. He says, I'm doing only hundred. He's doing hundred miles per hour <laughs> So when the machine is good, speed is a natural expression. Similarly, if your energies are good, to be joyful, to be blissful, to be loving, to be sensitive is just a natural outcome. But you're just an office goer. You need just a car which goes to office, comes back home. You want to just maintain your official situation and your domestic situation. For this, you don't want to put in so much work to create that kind of an energy system which will be in a different state because that'll take a lot of work. So for you, if you're like that, I, I don't want you to be like that, but if you're like that, then we will tell you, please practice love, practice smile, jo be joyful, be nice to people, all this rubbish. <laughs> you don't go and tell a mango tree, please make the fruit sweet. You don't dis say such things, it's, it's nature. That's how, if you enhance your energetic system to a certain level of possibility, to be pleasant, to be at its peak, to be sensitive, to be sharp is natural. Otherwise, you're trying to be. Well, this happened. In Texas, in the Texas University, uh, you know, there are football players in the university who don't have to really study. They'll get through because they are he heroes in the university, because they are playing game and you know, there's a certain draw for them. So the coach took the... the top quarterback in the team and pleaded with the dean that, you know, this guy is a star in the team. You can't put him through the regular examination. We will just do, uh, you know, oral exam, why why was he? No writing because he doesn't know how to write. <laughs> he just throws the ball, nothing wrong with that. So the dean agreed and then this had for a test. So the professor asked him, how much is seven times seven? He said, I think it could be forty-nine. The coach jumped up, and said, please, please give him another chance, please give him another chance <laughs> 
this is happening in life. You, they are supposed to be your loud ones. You behave so nasty and say, please give another chance, please, I'll be loving tomorrow <laughs> Because what should be an intrinsic nature is being practiced. Practicing is very hard. But those who are not willing to do the necessary work, they can only practice life. Maybe in the next life they will be better. So that is why so many varieties of offerings so that something will knock them. So should I do love practice, devotion practice? No, if your energies are all inclusive, to be loving and to be in absolute sense of devotion and blissfulness is very natural for you. That's the way life should be. That's the way every other life is, they are what they are. But a human being has come like this because the possibilities are big. Because the possibilities are big, work needs to be done. If the possibility was small, eat, sleep, reproduce, die. If this was the possibility, only possibility, then no work to be done. This is the beauty of the animals. They don't have to work hard to be who they are. A tiger is not working hard to be a good tiger, just eat well, that's it. All creatures are like this, just enough nourishment, good elephant, good tiger happens by itself. That is because they are living within the parameters, two lines that the nature has drawn. But the very nature of a human being is, we don't want to live among lines, we want to go beyond. If such a longing is there, then you must invest time and energy and focus. Sadhguru, I'm at least five times a month I'm doing Sadhguru, but Five times a month, thirty times a month is not enough. What is needed is moment to moment attention as to what this is about. Nitya, nitya, vicharam must go on endlessly. Then it will transform itself. One person may, may take that much time, another person may take little less time or more time. This is karmic. You can't help that. It's like that. You look at somebody and think, why are they able to be wonderful within a few months of practice? Why am I like this? That's how it is. That you cannot alter. You can only change it by changing the foundations of how this has grown. You know, we are coming out with a book called Karma Sutras. It's gone to the publisher already and uh, Because 2020 is a little <laughs> uh, Because of that, they're launching it in the beginning of 2021. But uh, Karma Sutras are about this, how to change the fundamental software of who you are. How to do that? So do I have to learn all that? No, that's why we've taught you simple practices where you learn to distance yourself, transforming it is a different kind of work. Distancing it is simple, you keep it little away, suddenly there's not so much of a problem. I think there's been a lot of reaction about this, uh, about two or three days ago there was a quote which said, if you have strong sense of, I'm just paraphrasing it now, strong sense of likes and dislikes, you will be trapped by it. Because your likes and dislikes are the basis of your karmic structure, what kind of karma you build. So shall I like everything? Is it possible? Is it possible to like everything? You are not capable of that. The only way is to keep a little distance, that means your likes and dislikes become light, not too strong. Then your persona becomes a little loose. When your persona is not tight-fitting on you, then your energies will grow naturally. This is a simple thing. So why they're talking about love is, 
you must be loving to everybody means what? In a way they're telling you, even if you cannot like everybody, at least learn to, s you know, be able to withstand them a little bit. <laughs> That's what they're trying to tell you. Being loving to everyone means what? They're trying to tell you, let your likes and dislikes not determine your activity or how you feel and think about them. You're trying to break it from the other end, which uh, it works to some extent, I'm not saying it doesn't, it works. That is the way most of the population will go anyway, but it will not go all the way, it cannot go all the way. If you're looking for liberation, that's not the way. If you're looking for social success, that is the way. All you have to do is smile and act loving, say a few nice things, give some gifts, do this, you'll have a social success. But that is not for those who are looking for ultimate liberation, that's not the way to go. Uh, well, we have spoken many, many things, but remaining with this specific question, is love and devotion the answer or enhancing my energy is the answer. Well, it's best that you use a shotgun instead of a rifle. If you r use a rifle, you must be really good. You know what's the difference? You know what's the difference between a shotgun and a rifle? Oh, most people don't know. What's it? Okay, a rifle means it has only one bullet. It'll go tsh. A shotgun means usually 16 gauge, it has 16 small pellets, it'll spread like this. If you're not good at aiming at anything, shotgun is good, boom, it'll hit somebody. <laughs> it is like uh, going on the matrimony uh, <laughs> It'll hit somebody. <laughs> Rifle means you must be good at it. You want to hit this person, you must be able to hit that person. Then only rifle is good. Otherwise, boom, it may just go somewhere. So, the question is about this. A shotgun is good for most people because they need to hit something. If they don't hit anything for a long time, they will get frustrated. So you also practice uh, being nice to people, being loving, devotion. I can't stand this person, I'm in the temple. <laughs> I'm very devoted to Devi, but... <laughs> if I look this way, it'll give me jitters. If I look that way, daggers. Uh, all these issues are there. So it's good to practice love <laughs> Can't stand them, but <laughs> practicing love. So it's better to do everything, to be trying to be peaceful, be joyful, to be loving, to be devout, at the same time working on your energy. As the machine improves, it'll... its performance naturally improves. I personally, um, for that, that you improve the machine, don't worry about the performance, performance will happen. How else will it be if you have a great machine? Even that fool drives at hundred miles per hour, we are not able to catch up with him, we all think we are great riders <laughs> That's life <laughs> Every time you get at something, See, essentially you need to understand, you're in some way, whether you're thinking of going to heaven or wanting to attain mukti or want to get a new job or want to get married or want to get unmarried, whatever is your goal, you are essentially looking for success. What you intend must happen, that's the whole thing. Success means in individual experience, what I want must happen. 
Now, as you know, a thousand times I've told you <coughs> that the only and only reason for your unhappiness is that life is not happening the way you think it should happen. That's all. It's as simple as that. So this is a simple equation that you need to solve. All of you should work on this. We will uh, see how to sort this out for you in so many different ways in the coming days, but this is something you try to solve. The basis of your unhappiness is life is not happening the way you want. Virus times, life will definitely not happen the way you want. So how to be happy? You must work out this equation. You can use various tricks, various tricks. Force, coercion, uh, you know, scheduling, wooing, many, many things you can do to situations. None of them will work hundred percent. This happened, Shankar and Pillai went fishing. After many hours of waiting, one tiny little baby fish got caught on the hook. He pulled it out, then took it out and glared at it and shouted, don't you come here again without your parents and threw it back. <laughs> there are many ways to deal with it. Will it work is the only question because the basis of one's unhappiness is life is not happening the way you want. You don't have enough energy to support you in such a way that you can walk on the street lovingly. Doesn't matter, nobody's there. Doesn't matter, nobody is there. No man, woman, child, no creature is there, simply wasting love and going. Do you have enough energy to do that? That's a question. If you had the energy, you would spill it all over and go. If you don't have, you will conserve it on the street. <laughs> go home and... Because if you don't conserve it, when you go home it'll be over. You won't have the energy for anything. One day this happened. Shankaran Pillai went, was going home from office. Then he suddenly remembered, in the last fifteen years and before marriage, how they were together and he bought flowers for her every day, all that. Then he suddenly remembered, after the wedding, he's not brought her flowers even a single time. Then he thought, let me change my ways. And he went to a florist and bought a bunch of red roses and went home. She, you know, a harried woman opened the door and she said, what? Today, the children had a food fight and I've been trying to clean the whole damn bedroom since morning and as if that was not enough, the kitchen sink uh, leaked and the place was flooded and it took another half a day and here I am and you come home drunk. <laughs> Flowers. So, <laughs> if you try from the other side, there'll be many confusions, disappointments, problems. But if you have enough energy to spill love around you, ah, somebody rejects you, somebody doesn't respond to you, somebody thinks you're a nutcase, what does it matter? You are... That's how life should be <laughs> Thank you. Yoga, yoga, yogeshwaraya Bhuta, bhuta, bhuta Kaleshwaraya Shiva Shiva Sarva